Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The race to the bottom for the WBA for its rankings continues with possibly one of the worst inclusions in its rankings history with a cruiserweight who has not been active for two years included in the top 15. So see here on screen, so at number 12, Mike Wilson. So as I say, he has not fought since 2019. He is a cruiserweight. He has fought at heavyweight before, but his last outing was at cruiserweight. He is uh, uh, jumps in here at number 12. And the question is, for what? For what purpose? Why is this guy just randomly turned up in the rankings? Well, simple answer, because we had a couple of breadcrumbs leading us to this position. And even on Twitter, ahead of this uh, inclusion, I said that this was coming. So Trevor Bryan, so see here on screen, on his Instagram, he says, look at the next victim, I mean meal to come, and a whole bunch of weird emojis and a, a you know, dozen or so hashtags. And actually, this is the video clip that accompanied the post, some weird sort of scrunching up his face. So Trevor Bryan is uh, saying that a fight is to come. And on Twitter, so see here on screen, after that news, I said, WBA regular belt holder Trevor Bryan hinting at the next fight for him is coming soon. And on the current rankings that had been up at the time that that post went out, I said that judging by those rankings, he likely beats very few within the top 15. So I was expecting a soft touch to enter the next update of the rankings, which is imminent. And uh, a number of hours later, the update came. And now we have uh, this inclusion at number 12 of Mike Wilson. I was almost about to say Mike Lee, but I think he's the um, 168 pounder. But So Mike Wilson, who has a record of 21, and you, a lot of people will be asking, who is this guy? Mike Wilson, what does he do? What? How does he deserve to be in the rankings here? So a record of 21 and 1. And I had to actually go hunting for his age because it wasn't on BoxRec. Uh, but he is uh, reportedly, from at least from what I've been able to establish online, 38 years old. A cruiserweight in his last outing and actually for most of his career and mostly against very you know low opposition uh, and when he did step up he was beaten uh, by Denis Lebedev and that was all the way back uh, in 2018 so his last fight 2019 and uh, that was a TKO, TKO win so obviously Trevor Bryan saying he's got a fight coming up, an announcement coming soon, and this guy materializes in the rankings. So it doesn't take a genius to join the one dot and go, okay, so this is the opponent that's going to be fed to Trevor Bryan. And let's face it, Trevor Bryan has a penchant for wanting to face cruiserweights and beating up former cruiserweights who are stepping up to heavyweight. When he won his uh, interim title that nobody called for to be on the line, somehow it wound up being on the line in 2018. He beat up a faded and washed cruiserweight in BJ Flores. So this guy, Trevor Bryan, who really has a really thin resume ahead of that fight with Flores, he'd fought guys that had collectively in the three fights before Flores, over 70 losses. Fights BJ Flores, a wash cruiserweight, gets an interim title, and then does nothing for two and a half years. And then steps into the ring earlier this year, January the 30th. It was meant to be against Mahmoud Char. The fight didn't go ahead because Don King and his people did not give the requisite information to allow Char to get the proper visa to enter the country. And of course, who was Johnny on the spot at the time? Berman Stavern, another Don King fighter. And he was a guy who hadn't had a win in five years, hadn't been active for a couple of years, and was coming into a title fight off a loss. So, you know, make of that what you will. And then obviously we saw in that fight, actually Trevor Bryan labored, he struggled. So clearly they thought, well, we'll get this guy out again, but we need to uh, drop down the level of the opposition. And they have to this uh, cruiserweight who is stepping up to heavyweight for a title shot after two years of inactivity. This is absolute madness. And let's face it, Trevor Bryan is now fashioning one of the worst heavyweight title runs in history.
I know a lot of people don't regard his uh, now regular title because they managed to um, push Char off to the side. He was able to fight for the vacant WBA regular title against uh, uh, Berman Stavern back in January. But uh, if you do consider this to actually have a even a shred of legitimacy as a heavyweight champion, and I guess heavyweight champion with inverted commas given some of the shenanigans, the poor opposition, but, you know, having... BJ Flores, a cru former cruiserweight who was completely washed, a washed former Berman Stavern, who actually gave him a pretty hard time in the end, and that was somewhat embarrassing given that Stavern was so faded, a husk of a husk, and now you're bringing in a guy that hasn't been active for two years. There's a pattern here, and it's not good. It is this fight. I'm I'm 100 certain they're going to announce this, and it's embarrassing. Trevor Bryan should be embarrassed. As he says, this will be a meal or food or whatever he was saying, his next victim. And he's right, because this guy has no business being in what is going to be dubbed as a heavyweight title fight. And the way that they're going to sell this and try to give it some legitimacy is because uh, this guy that um, I'm sure Trevor Bryan is going to be announced to fight, Mike Wilson, Back in the amateurs, amateur days, he was quite a good amateur. Um, you know, he actually, you know, did some things in the amateurs, but that's a long time ago. Really hasn't done much as a pro, and certainly not at heavyweight. But back as an amateur, he actually owns a win over Andy Ruiz Jr. So you know that they are going to use that in the build-up to a fight for Trevor Bryan to sort of say, look, this guy is legit. He beat a guy like Andy Ruiz Jr., but they probably won't say that uh, Andy Ruiz Jr. was like 17, 18 at the time, where this guy was obviously, uh, what, in his mid-20s. So much more mature, developed, and further along in his sort of boxing pedigree. But uh, yeah, and it's me not meant to be any disrespect to Mike Wilson, but let's face it, he's done nothing to deserve let alone a cruiserweight title shot, but a heavyweight title shot in the WBA. Um, he's done nothing to be ranked. And this is clearly some sort of weird case of, you know, pay for play corruption. This is just, you know, the same old WBA absolute crappiness that we've come to expect. And actually, as I say, it's a race to the bottom. They're constantly trying to outdo their own stupid silliness shenanigans, dog crap, whatever you want to call it, however you want to couch it. There is no no way this guy has any business being ranked, let alone facing for one of their even their secondary titles. But the fact that Trevor Bryan had given the ghost away and basically said, look, I've got a, another meal to come. This guy materializes the ranking. Well, you can actually book it. He's going to end up facing Trevor Bryan. Disgraceful absolutely disgraceful and Trevor Bryan like I say is fashioning one of the worst heavyweight runs at a so-called title level in heavyweight history you can take that to the back it really is um, he really should be embarrassed for himself and he should be asking for better from his promoter Don King or yeah, I mean King may actually because he's as old as the hills these days not have a lot of promotional control or as much as he once did but whoever is pulling the strings needs to pull a little bit better for some better opponents bearing in mind Trevor Bryan's really got nothing much on his resume even Berman Stavern probably was the best name on his record, and he was completely washed when Brian fought him. So it's not going to be a good opponent. He's not going to be legit. It's absolute dog crap. And, you know, I'm kind of pissed off about it, If you can, as you can probably tell. Anyway, let's get into the, let's get to the rest of the rankings because we also um, have the inclusion of Michael Hunter. So out of nowhere, he's at number six. So what that's about, I'm not quite sure. But he wasn't in the the rankings last month. He comes in at number six, and as we know, there is an IBF eliminator meant to be happening with him and Filip Hergovich. But uh, two of the losers that drop out for the inclusion of Mike Wilson and Michael Hunter, uh, Otto Valin, he had been at 13 last month, and also Michael Polite Coffey, he had been at number 15. But they go for the inclusion of Hunter, which you can say, you know, that's a legit ranking. Uh, coming in, in you know, number six, I mean, you could beg the question, why wasn't he in the rankings anyway? But in terms of Mike Wilson, yeah, not good. Drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out